Sunday. Happy Sunday. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we've seen some epic videos this weekend. I have one more to show you. It's, uh, it's the full Slinky video, so get excited. <laughs> it's not, but if you want to see that, it's not that. If you want to see that, just YouTube Epic Slinky, and it's surprisingly entertaining, so you'll enjoy it. But this is uh, maybe one of my favorite Epic videos, so I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope uh, you recognize and uh, you'll recognize a lot of these people. So away we go. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, Nope, that is not it. No pants land. That is not it, yeah. What? So I had a blast this weekend. I hope you guys did too. Um, I really enjoyed hanging out with you guys, and um, um, I hope that you guys got a lot out of this. If you didn't get anything out of this, I, um, it's too bad because I, I thoroughly am enjoying this, and I really appreciate the conversations I've had. I'm getting the chance to pray with you guys has been meant a whole lot to me. Um, it was cool. One of the one of you guys even asked if you could pray for me. I thought that was awesome. So I really appreciate that. Um, and. Uh, it was interesting last night watching how, when I was like, hey, if you guys want prayer, come up and get prayer, or go back to your small group leaders and get some prayer. But some of you just stayed, and um, Adam said it perfectly. Some of you stayed, and you were supposed to get up. And you guys know in your heart that you were supposed to get up last night. But you didn't want to for one reason or another. Most of you, I bet, it was because, well, if I get up, then my friends are going to know that I need prayer. What's the issue there? Like, we all need prayer. Like, I don't, I didn't understand it, but it's not me to understand. So, I hope that you guys will take this time and going forward, um, use the small group leaders that are here. Um, these leaders here love you and they want to spend more time with you, and you cannot bother them. Like, they want you to ask them questions. Um, and if you guys didn't come up for prayer, that's totally cool. You don't need someone else to pray with. Um, you don't need like to go to someone to confess your prayers or anything like that. Um, you can go directly to God. That's the best thing about um, what we do is that you can go right to God with any of your hurts or your, you know, your fears or your loneliness or whatever. You guys can go right to God, which is great. So um, don't think about it too much, but when, when you're sitting there thinking like, well, I can't go up because my friends didn't go up, think of it like you're not going to be standing in front of your friends one day when you pass away. Like it's not going to be your friends waiting there for you to talk to you. It's going to be Jesus Christ. So um, don't get intimidated by people because they're not going to be around your whole life. Um, I know some of you guys are like fond at the hip right now, um, but some relationships, you know, tend to fade away after middle school or high school. Not so much your siblings; those are around for a long time. So make sure that you guys are super good to your siblings because they're going to be the ones that are at your 50th birthday party. So be nice to your siblings. <laughs> yeah. So I want to personally thank all the leaders. I want to thank all the leaders for coming this weekend. Um, I know you guys gave up a whole lot, so let's give him a round of applause. Because these are people that have lives. Like, you guys are in high school, middle schoolers. Well, you guys don't realize that you're really not that busy, even though, like, school is very overwhelming and stuff. But, like, adults, they have things to do. And they gave up their weekend to spend time with you because they want to build into you and pour their lives into you guys. So don't take that for granted because they want to spend more time with you. So. Um, find time to get together with them. Also, Adam. Also, Adam. Thank you for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Well, let's let's keep it for Adam. Times Adam and I have become super close since we met at NTS now three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. Yeah, um, and we talk every single week. And um, he's a great guy. And the fact that he's an amazing youth pastor, and the fact that he um, has this awesome personality, come up on stage and do all these funny things. None of those reasons are reasons that I like admire him or look up to him. It's because he has this awesome relationship with Jesus Christ, and you can see that in everything he does. Like, whenever we talk, that's the stuff that, it just comes up in normal conversation. Like, we don't have to force God into our conversations. Like, it just naturally comes up. Like, you guys here, you don't have to, like, it's not weird for you to bring up the Buffalo Bills. Like, you guys all are so sold out to the Buffalo Bills. But, whatever. That's not the point. The point is, like, when, when Adam is talking about God, it's just so natural for him to bring it up. So, don't ever think that you guys are bothering Adam. Like, he wants you to come to him with questions and stuff. I'm a youth pastor, too. I would love it if every single kid in my youth group came up to me and said, I have this going on in my life. Would you please pray for me, and can we talk about this? Like, we want that. So, if you guys have stuff going on in your life, talk to him. All right? You also have Adam. You have the, the other leaders here. So, definitely spend time, um, like, with these guys. Uh, and also, Pam. Where's Pam? Ham is the yeah. Ham is the secret sauce for this weekend. We can admit that, right? Yeah. 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 Ham does so much for you guys, and most of it is behind the scenes. So make sure you give her a high five or a hug because she's 
uh, absolutely amazing. Um, and she's quite the photographer. Let me say oh. that. She is great. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. So anyway. So yeah. So be open with your with leaders. Be open with Adam. Um, and be open with God because I know a lot of people, a lot of teenagers struggle with loneliness. Um, that's just a fact. You're you're not the only person in this room who's struggling with loneliness. A lot of you guys are. So uh, there's people that you can talk to, and of course you can get along or get alone with God at any time. So this morning I want to talk about this guy Benaniah. Who's here has heard about Benaniah? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. Oh, what? Okay. Benaniah is not mentioned much in the Bible. He's mentioned, I think, twice, and it's like two little snippets. Um, but he's mentioned once in maybe one of the most epic verses in the Bible. And when I read it, I just thought, like, this guy was awesome. So you guys know David, of course, right? We've been talking about David. You know who David is. He's this king. He has this charge of this hu huge army. And you know how, like, the president has, like, the Secret Service? Well, David had basically his Secret Service. He called them David's Mighty Men, which I think is, like, a cool thing, like, the Mighty Men. But he didn't have just, like, four... Uh, people or whatever. He had, I think, 71 bodyguards, and he had three guys that, like, really hung on him. And one of them was this guy, Benaniah. And Benaniah, um, he's talked about really, really quickly, but it says he was a type of warrior, like, picture this, like, actually, picture Ori. That's what Benaniah probably looked like. Like, just like this big guy with this big sword, probably. Um, it said one time he, he faced this giant who was seven and a half feet tall, and he killed that warrior, this guy who was huge. Another time, he went against an army, and he went face to face with two of the army's best fighters, and he killed both of them. So this is giving this guy some credit, like, this is how cool Ben and I is, this is how epic this guy is. And then, in the next verse, it says that he had a battle with a lion, which is pretty cool. It talks about, in, in Samuel chapter 23, it says, Ben and I went into a snowy pit to face a lion. And I love the Bible because um, it, it like paints such a cool picture. Like if you read the Bible and you get into it, the Bible is like really, really well written. And it talks about how he goes into this pit on a snowy day. Like you guys can probably picture, right? Like like this, it's snowing. It's probably just like it's here in Buffalo or when you guys are in Buffalo, snowing all the time. And he's walking in there. I don't know what he had. If he just went in with his fist or a sword, probably a sword because you know why as well take a sword. But it says that Ben and I goes into a pit on a snowy day and kills a lion. I think that is so cool because lions are amazing. Lions are pretty much designed for two things. To look awesome and to kill stuff. That's all lions do. That's pretty much it. And it says that he went into a snowy pit. He went into a pit on a snowy day and he killed a lion. You know, some of you are thinking, oh, the Bible's boring. No, it's not. You're boring. The Bible is awesome. The Bible is the most epic story ever written. And every time I talk to a group of kids or a group of people, and someone says to me that the Bible is boring, I always ask them the same question. Have you read the Bible? And they're like, well, no, not, not really. Yeah, a little bit on the You haven't read the Bible. So how do you know whether... It's like me making fun of Harry Potter when I haven't read Harry Potter. Like, I don't make fun of Harry Potter because I haven't read it. I'm sure if I read it, then I would. But I... <laughs> but, yeah. What? See, and people always get insulted when I make that joke when I say that Harry Potter is boring. How come people don't get fired up when I say the Bible's boring? Why is that? Why is that? So I'm saying, get into the Bible. The Bible is the most epic story ever written, and it has everything in there. Like people say that it, there's not like action going on. There's battles. There's wars. There's beheadings. There's killings. There's fights with animals and gladiators. And, all this stuff. They're, like, the Bible is amazing. And then some people will say, well, the Bible was written 2,000 years ago. How is that still relevant today? You know, it's this old book written by, written by some old people, and, you know, it, sure, it applies to those people. It can't apply to me today, right? It's 2014. Those Bible stories aren't still, they don't mean anything. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and narrow, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes oh. of the heart. And we've been talking about that, right? The, our, our thoughts and what we have in our hearts. That's what it says the Bible does. It judges our thoughts and attitudes on our heart. And I'm not here to make you guys feel bad about reading the Bible. That's not my goal. My goal is not to make you guys feel bad about not reading scripture because I hate eating vegetables. What? Yay! Yay! 
I do not like eating vegetables, and here's why. So I just started going to this nutritionist. Her name is Francine, the nutritionist, and she's wonderful. And I went to her to like talk about my diet, and she, I like listed out everything that I eat, and I was like, all right, well, I eat pizza, pasta, mac and cheese, um, which is also pasta, I guess, gummy bears. And she was like, wait, gummy bears? Like that's your actual diet? And I was like, yeah, these are the things that I like enjoy and stuff. So she's like, okay, well. You're, if I was going to rate your eating habits on a, a grading scale, I'd give you about a C minus. I was so pumped. I was like, all right, a C minus, I'll take that. And she's like, listen, our goal is not to get you from a C minus to an A plus today. Because if I sat with her in that session and she's like, okay, what you need to do is eat kale and pumpkin seeds and like grass or whatever healthy people eat, like whatever like that stuff is, wheatgrass, that's a, that's a thing. Wheatgrass shots. If she did that and she took away all the stuff that I really enjoy, like you can't eat pizza, pizza. pizza. You can't eat any pizza. 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 That's gonna be the new word. So like if she said you can't eat all these things that you enjoy and you have to completely change your diet today, I know what I would do. I would go to the store and I'd buy all the good food and I would be able to do it for like two days. And then after that, I would just get like unhappy because it's not my normal routine. I wouldn't be able to do it. That's just what happens. Like if it's too much, too fast, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So she said, we're not trying to do that. We're not trying to get you to a C minus to an A today. I just want to get you from a C minus to a C plus. And I was like, oh, I could do that. What does that mean? So she's like, okay, well, you said you really like eating gummy bears. And of course I do. And she was like, okay, well, from now on, just don't eat the red ones. And I was like, all right, why? She's like, well, there's red dye in it, but if you just eat less of them, then you can have still some of them and still enjoy it. I was like, okay, I can do that. And she's like, when you eat pizza, make sure it's not like Domino's or like Pizza Hut or something. Make sure it's at least like an easy switch. And we went over my whole diet, and it was like these little things that you should add, little things that I should take away, like no more soda, more water, and stuff like that. And it became something that I've been able to keep up with because she only changed my diet a little bit. You know? So coming out this weekend, if, if you guys are thinking, well, from here on out, I'm going to read my Bible every single day, cover to cover, or I'm going to spend two hours in the Word every single night, or two hours in prayer every single night, you know what, that might last for like two days. Because you're taking your life and you're completely switching it to the point where it's probably not going to work. So I don't think that's the way that you guys should come out of a weekend like this, because this weekend has been awesome, and we've had a great time doing all this stuff, and you guys have hopefully heard some stuff that you can take home. But you guys need to come up with a plan for yourselves of how to make yourselves like your own like spiritual growth plan. So right now think of it. If everyone think about your own prayer life. Alright? Don't say what it is, but what is your prayer life right now? If your prayer life is I pray before I go to bed and before my meals. Like those are the, the times that I pray. Right? Some of us aren't even at that spot. But if you're like, if you only pray before bed and before your meals, okay, just think, all right, well, I'm also going to add a prayer time on the way to school and pray for my day. And that's something that you can wrap your mind around because that's something that you can be intentional about. And just like one small switch. If you read none of the Bible right now, you can, actually, if you read none of the Bible right now, you're one of the luckiest people in this room because for you to increase more scripture, all you have to do is read one verse or one chapter a day. So you're in a good spot right now. If you come out this weekend and you continue to read no Bible, or you continue not to pray, I think that's when you have something that you really need to work on. But if you are at the point where you're not reading anything right now, that's okay because you can move forward from here on out. Does that make sense? So think about your prayer life. And think, how could I add something to my prayer life? We're going to spend some time in our, in our small groups after talking about these little tips. And if you don't read the Bible, what's one way that you can read the Bible more? One well, the way I read the Bible more is through Instagram. I follow different Bible devotion accounts, and when they pop up every day, I read them. And it's like, hey, I got a little bit more Bible than I would have if I wasn't following that account. So it's a simple example, but it's like something that is very, very practical. <clears throat> the other one is the one that's a little bit more touchy, because people don't really want to talk about this one. Um, it's about who you hang out with. Think about your friends group. Think about the people that you actually spend time with. Do you want to be like those people? Because you, by default, spending time with those people, you're going to become more like those people. That's pretty weird to think about. But if you take your, your closest five friends, I bet you guys have a very similar sense of humor, very similar styles. You think things are funny. You think the same movies are funny. You think the same jokes are funny. You think the same whispers are funny. Like, that's the kind of stuff that 
you will enjoy because you become like the people you hang out with, which is pretty cool in one respect and pretty terrifying in another respect. Because I remember when I first heard a verse, uh, Proverbs 27, 17, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. It means who you hang out with is who you will become like. And when I first heard that, I was like, okay, well, most of my friends are pretty good. Uh, but then I was still thinking, well, there's still some people that I hang out with when I was younger, so I'm still thinking of like these kids that I hang out with. Like, are these really kids that I want to hang out with? And I was like, not really. So I'm not saying stop hanging out with non-Christians. I'm not saying that. Um, but I am saying, think about who you spend your time with. And my guess is that someone goes to church into youth group doesn't make them a Christian necessarily, but most likely you guys will align on more topics. You guys will have things to talk about, and it won't be awkward to bring up God. You know, it will be very natural to bring up God, just like it will be very natural to bring up your favorite book or your favorite movie or your favorite sports team. Um, so think about your spiritual life on like a grading scale. If you were to give yourself a grade, what would your grade be? And the cool thing is that there's no failure. Like, even if it's an F, you're not a failure. It's just, this is one of the most easiest things that you can improve your life with because you're not going to, your past actions doesn't determine your future results. Okay? So think about your life and what it would be like on a, a, on a, grade, a spiritual grading scale. And if you want to share that later on in your smart group, maybe that's something you could talk about. And then, if you get someone who you can talk about it with, they're called accountability partners or accountability, accountability buddies. I don't know. There's something, <laughs> just someone that you can talk to. Um, it helps so much because then you can sit down and talk to those person about those things. And if you want to be someone slightly older, grab Tim, grab Rick, grab John, grab anyone who is like slightly older, and they'll keep you accountable. And they won't mind sending you a text message or a phone call that says, hey, how are you doing with your spiritual life this week? Some of you people that I was walking around with last night, I said, hey, how are you doing spiritually right now? And you don't ask your friends that that often, but why not? We ask them, how's your day going? You know, how are you feeling? Are you tired or whatever? But we don't really say, how is your spiritual life? And because I think it's a very vulnerable place to go to, but it's okay to go to those places. You know, especially with people that you can trust. Your small group leaders are a perfect example of those people that you can trust. So, use this time, like, really wisely. Um, use your time that you have together. Use the time that you guys have in youth group together, because this is, like, really special time. Um, eventually, you guys will leave, leave youth group. I know sixth graders are thinking, well, I'm here for whatever years. But, like, eventually, like, seniors and juniors, like, you guys are gone soon. You're going to be in college, and you're going to be in, like, areas that aren't all Christian like you have. So really take advantage of this. Um, you'll be really happy that you do. And we had this awesome weekend, right? We had this incredible night last night where people were praying for each other. We had a great worship service. Um, Tyler was amazing up here. And it was just a great time where we could really spend time with God. And I always think the same thing, where coming out this weekend, like, my life is going to be different this time. Like, from here on out, I'm going to do all these things. Um, and it's interesting because we can stay excited for a couple days, maybe a week. You know, maybe if we're lucky, we can stay excited until a youth group comes up or until church and we can get like spiritually recharged again. But youth group and, and church is not designed to constantly keep you excited. Like youth group is not designed to be your life support. Like you have to come up with that on your own. Sure, you can come and have a great time and talk about God with your friends and hang out with your friends and all, but it's not totally designed for you to be a Christian only at youth group and only on Sunday. You know what I mean? So, like, when we leave here, life is going to hit us. Like, we're going to go back to reality. We're going to go back to the same situations that we came from. We're going to have the same stresses that we had coming, out of, coming to here. They're still waiting for you at home. But now you can think of them in a different way. Which I think is really exciting because you get to control your attitude and you get to control what confidence you're going to walk in. Right? If you're going to be walking in your own confidence or you're going to be walking in the confidence of God. And then you go back to school and you have your school friends, right? Um, and you think, well, I can talk to God, I can talk about God at youth group. But, and my youth group friends, but what about, like, my high school friends? Uh, I couldn't do that. Like, they don't think God is cool. Hey, well, maybe... 
I can tell them something that Adam has said, and that God will be cool to them. Like, then I can make Jesus cool. Listen, Jesus does not need you to make him cool. Like, people are not going to get excited about Jesus, or people are not going to get saved because of you. Because you're not changing anyone. It's Jesus who's changing people. All right? So Jesus does not need you to make him cool. So uh, when you go back to school, if, if there's people that you want to talk to about God, be bold and step out and talk to them about God. You know? It's totally acceptable. And then if they don't want to talk about God, that's fine. Just be like, hey, when you want to come to youth group, we have this great whatever coming up. And people will come to weekends, and people will come to camp, and people come to youth group because they're fun. And then, oh yeah, by the way, here's, about, here's this guy who's completely changed my life. And you know, people need him. People absolutely, desperately need Jesus. And you might be the only way that they're going to hear about Jesus. So if you invite them to youth group or invite them to church, like think about how great that is and what you're going to do for, for him. I think that's amazing. So last thing, and then I'm closing. Um, and you guys can have uh, as long as you need in your, your small groups. When you think about your schools or your family or your friend group outside of church or whatever, um, you have everything in you already um, to share gospel, to share the gospel. You have everything in you already that, that you need to talk to your friends about God. Like you don't need to learn more to, be, to have that boldness to talk about God. You already have everything in you. So you don't have to think, well, if someone else was in my youth group, or if Adam came, I mean, in my school, or if Adam came to my school, then my friends would hear about God. Like, no, you have that ability in you. God put that in, in all of us. Like, we don't have any special ability that gives us the ability to talk about God at all. Um, and again, the Bible is the most epic story in history. And the Bible is not saying, listen, I think you should try these things. I'm not saying that. The Bible has in, in its pages what it wants you to do for your, your life. You want your whole story? Like, open up the Bible and read it. Like, read its pages. Like, come to YouTube and listen to the leaders here because they want to tell you more about the Bible and more about this guy, Jesus. So, what you guys need to do is you need to take the Bible so seriously that you allow it to change your life forever. You guys hear that? It's the last thing I'm going to say. Take the Bible so seriously that you allow it to change your life forever. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this weekend. Uh, we thank you for all the fun that we've had. We thank you for Warwick coming to uh, hang out with us, Lord. And we thank you for the, the great games that we were able to play and the relationships that we were able to build, Lord. And um, I just ask that every single person here can um, reflect on this weekend, not only for the fun uh, but also for the things that we learned, Lord, and the things that we talked about in our small groups, Lord. And um, I ask that in this last small group we can um, be completely open, Lord, and not care what our friends think or not care what our friends think or when we go home, but we can just walk in your confidence, Lord. And um, we just thank you so much for everything that you're doing in this youth group um, and in each one of our lives. You know, we pray. Amen.